Hello again, I'm Larry Hamilton and uh, welcome to another painting class. This is a uh, painting we're going to do of a oil painting, sort of a snow scene with a nice little country bridge in it. Um, I have the canvas tone with sort of a lavender color as you can see and uh, I also, also, also have a sketch on there that uh, I put in with charcoal and uh, this this painting will be used in our December 19th oil painting class and uh, I'm kind of anxious to paint it. Um, I'll go through the paints, the palette, it's the usual palette that we have and uh, just so those new painters who may not have seen this before will know what we're painting with. We're using the uh, standard Bob Ross brushes, a one inch blender, a, uh, a fan brush, a, a script liner, a painting knife, and I have a couple of other uh, bristle brushes, a filbert and a flat that I may use. Um, the colors we're using today are the standard palette again, uh, titanium white, phthalo blue, Prussian blue, midnight black, Van Dyke brown, dark sienna, alizarin crimson, sap green, cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, Indian yellow, and bright red. So uh, with that, uh, not much more to talk about and let's get going with this painting. I do not have it uh, covered with oil. I do not have it covered with liquid white. Um, we're going to just start out with the background and start putting in some uh, some of the sky. I'm going to use some titanium white and uh, a little bit of uh, very little bit of my uh, blue here, Prussian blue. Just touch it, very very light. Um, I'm going to put that sort of in this corner up here. We're going to start in the top. And uh, I'll just start putting this in a little bit too dark. The canvas is totally dry, and uh, I do have some linseed oil that I may add to my brush to give myself a little uh, additional movement of the paint. I'm going to get my uh, painting tray here that has a little bit on it that will help this paint move around just a little bit as you can see. Uh, put some more white in there and we have a little sky gap over here on the right side that I'm going to put some white in. Light color anyway. We're going to have some trees around this. But I'm just using the uh, X strokes as we would typically use in all of our painting that we do with this uh, technique. The things I'm changing, I'm not putting on uh, any um, any liquid white, which is uh, unusual, but I'm finding that I think students are having a little better time controlling the paint without having such a heavy coat of liquid white underneath. I'm touching in now some Prussian blue with a little bit of alizarin, and some of this area over here is going to be uh, um, sort of a lavender color, I guess I want to get out of it, see what I can do. I've got lavender on the canvas right now, and uh, I'm just going to sort of cover this. This is snow, a snow scene, and uh, we're going to have some interesting shadows. We have a nice bridge in here that uh, is reminiscent of a Christmas type scene. If this is our December painting, I want to have some some sort of a snow scene that we can use. Um, just using a little of this oil here and there to uh, sort of thin this out, make it spread a little easier. This is going to be snow Nice lavender color. I love this other blue here. Let's see if I can get a little different lavender color, maybe with some bright red, some blue, some white. And a little bit of a change in color. I want some of that color up above as well, but right now this will do for this area. 
Let's get a base coat on the painting. Actually, this snow comes all the way up. Using a little phthalo blue up here. Snow's gonna come all the way up like this and come down and make some really nice, a nice bank of snow here on the right side. I'm just gonna go ahead and put most of that in, at least an underpainting of it. And uh, we'll get going with some more of the background in a moment, but. Uh, that. All right, I think the sky is maybe a little bit too dark. Lighten it up just a little, put a little uh, more titanium white in there in some spots. Come down a little bit here. We're going to get a, I uh, want to get a nice sort of um, better looking lavender than I've got in there so far. These trees in the distance are going to have some muted lavender color, even maybe a little bit of gray. If I can take some white and put in the gray, that'll give me a nice lavender color. You can see here, try putting some of that in back here. So I'm just sort of hitting the areas where there are some trees in the background, distant trees. Using this brush vertically and uh, change the color a little bit, get some different shades of gray or lavender. So this is a pretty much of an underpainting and um, I'll be using quite a few blues and grays around this bridge. And we start getting a few other colors over here, down to the top of this bridge. Okay, let's see. By just using the bristles of this big brush, we can sort of get soft edges back there in the distance that look like the tops of trees. So I'll put some more things in there in a moment. Um, I think I've got a few more spots in here that maybe could use a little of this gray color, bluish gray color. stand of trees here in the back and another stand of trees that are here sort of in the middle ground. So we have background trees here. These trees will be in this area a little closer than the bridge and it's closer and the foreground is closer yet. So um, using this big brush we can cover a lot of canvas very quickly. Okay, so that's going to do that part of it. Let me Clean this brush out a little bit and get some of the paint out of it. Okay. Now I'm going to change brushes. I'm going to get my fan brush. A number three fan brush. And uh, I'm going to make myself some dark green here. I'm going to get some uh, ochre. And I'm going to try a little of this black. It usually gives a nice olive color when mixed with ochre or one of these yellows. Even with cad yellow, it gives an interesting green color. 
And if I need a little more green, I can always touch a little bit of blue in there, and that will green it up just a little. Okay, let's see how that's going to go for some of these trees in the background here. In this area here, we're going to have trees that are much more distinct, sticking out this way. And going off the top of the canvas, mixed with some of this brown, so we'll have some distance in there that will look like it's in the farther distance. And try a little more ochre. color. I think I'll put another blue in there that's uh, phthalo blue. We'll actually darken that even more. And I can get some... I'm just putting vertical streaks primarily. So we're getting some distance here by <clears throat> just leaving these little tops of these trees show against the sky back there in the distance. Let's see here. A little white. Light it up a little bit. Maybe even a little sap green. A little more yellow. Put these colors in. This, I'm going to darken it down now. I want it to get a little more toward the brown side. <clears throat> As I get to the left, I want to change the colors. Uh, a little more, so I'm going to add a little bit of dark sienna, which was a reddish brown, to this mixture I have on the palette, and just start bringing it down like this. Put a nice little base color under most of that. A little bit of black again. and This has to be dark because I want to make sure this bridge stands out in front of it. So these trees are going to have to be nice and dark in some areas. Okay. So using the brush vertically like this, and I'm actually getting these nice vertical streaks. Looks like it could be a woods, fairly dense woods. And uh, by making it come up against the sky, I'm getting some interesting effects back there. So I'm getting some depth in the painting, even though I'm going to have this big bridge in the foreground. Um, I want to have some depth in this painting. So, I'll keep darkening this just a little here in some areas by using my mixture of my Midnight Black and with some of this green. Get some dark spots in this area, some of these areas. And again, think of this as an underpainting because we're going to come back with our uh, filbert or another brush, maybe even the fan brush again, and put some more details in front of that. We're going to have some more details over here as well. Um, but that is pretty much what I want to have for the background. Okay. So I have a nice difference in value here and color so that this stand of trees looks farther away than this stand of trees, which is what I want, which gives me some depth. I have some nice effects going on in the sky. And uh, that's what I want for that part of it. I'm going to take my, clean this fan brush out. See how this is looking on camera. It looks pretty decent. Might want to just 
my back just a little to see the tops. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Let's keep moving. Okay, so now, how about the top of this bridge? I'm going to put the uh, underlaying part of this bridge. It's going to be a gray. might have a little blue in it. I don't know, not too much. I want it to be a gray color with some white tops on it. So I'm going to lay in here this bridge. Don't want to get that green. So... I'm putting in this uh, titanium white mixture and uh, some of my midnight black. Still using the fan fan brush here for this. Make some nice horizontal streaks, and uh, it's about the color I want for that bridge, that part of the this bridge. I'm going to have some vertical pieces that sort of stick out like this. So we'll get these in. Again, base coat. And over here, one more of them. So we know where they are. They're going to have slightly different color than the uh, some of the rest of the bridge. I think we even had one over here somewhere that's like a, just a little concrete post that sort of sticks up like that. Okay, this one here sticks up a little bit. And they're going to have snow on top of them, so I'm going to come back and put some snow on top of these caps, of these uh, posts. That will work there. Okay. Now, just slightly darker. I'm going to put a little more of my black in there, maybe a touch of blue even a little touch of this brown to warm it up just a little but this area of the bridge over here is going to be darker a little oil to thin that out a little bit so it spreads easier darker a little darker a little darker too dark and some white okay that's a that's probably one value darker than what I have for these posts right now, which is what I'm hoping for. That may be a little darker than I want it, but for now we'll put that in and see what it looks like. I'm going to leave room for a couple of pine trees over here. So I'll paint over that with some pine trees in a moment. Actually... Well, the bridge is starting to show slightly. When I'm quiet, I'm usually thinking. It takes the right brain to paint, and it takes left brain to talk about it. So we'll 
leave it like that, put some more over here. And we got a little more brown, maybe. Okay, that's starting to look like it. Okay. Thinking maybe that top of that bridge should be a little thicker in some spots. How am I going to fix that? I'll just come back and add some white here and maybe pull a streak across like that. I'm going to go over this again with at least one more time and maybe more. And uh, I'm going to want some soft edge here as it moves into the snow. Try a little ochre in here and see if I can warm some of that up in some spots. There and maybe a little over here. Okay, that looks like it's coming along nicely. Clean the brush, get some more paper towel. Underneath this bridge is actually another, there's a layer of uh, concrete underneath the bridge, but there's also a sort of a something that's a little darker right here that sort of stands out. I want to make put it in. It's the, it's the lip of this bridge opening. And it has a little bit of thickness to it. It's a little wider. So just using the fan brush again to lay that in. It's a little darker than what's above it. fade this into some trees or bushes over there on that side but we want to have this hopefully that looks like a nice arch there and then underneath that we have some some of the trees coming down back over here and we have the inside of this concrete arch there which has a little bit of blue in it so I'm going to pick up a little of my a little bit of my um, Prussian blue, stick it in here and see what I can come up with in this area. Since it's in shadow. And we want to gradiate that down to something a little lighter and a little warmer actually. So I'm going to put it in like this. And then come back and get some more white with a touch of ochre in it. And sort of start down here and see if I can pull up a little bit lighter colors. And this is going to be snow underneath here, down to the bank of the, the snow bank underneath. and. Uh, Actually comes down this far here actually. And it goes over. So it's dark at the top, gradiating into something lighter. And then we're gonna have snow all around the base of this. And we'll have some lavender colors in here, maybe some places like that. Yeah, all right, that's not too bad. Okay. Now this area underneath the bridge, I think I'm going to get my filbert brush out now. Since I need a smaller, smaller brush head. And I'm going to go back and get pick up some of these greens that I was using. 
with a little bit of the brown or uh, blacks. And in this area here, I want it to stand out. We know there's these trees continue down. So the underpainting color here is going to be this uh, some of this ochre and brown. As these trees extend down into this area about like this. So we can still see the trees. This should have probably a little more dark in it up here, which I will come back and put a little more dark in there in a few minutes. Maybe I'll do it now. It has to look like it connects to what's below it or the, uh, the eye gets fooled if you don't connect it to what's below it. Okay, and this comes over here. Like that. We got some. Okay. Okay, so that's starting to look like something behind the bridge. On the other side of the bridge. Fading into the into the background and it has some more white and gray back in here. Pick up a little of this lavender color. Not too lavenderish. Interesting shape back there. I'm going to make it look like the woods. Okay, so, all right. We now have about certainly a third of the half, third to a half of the underpainting done. And um, over here on the left side, I'm going to have to get some more white paint. Titanium white, you use a lot of titanium white when you paint snow scenes. So I'll slap throw a little more of that down. All right. Got that. Let's see if we can work on some more of this over here. We're going to have white in this area. It's going to stand out from that gonna merge and mix with this. Gonna get under this bridge here and put a little oil in this to sort of thin it down a little bit so that it goes on smoother. So these are areas that are gonna be snow covered and that stream is going to come back there and, and uh, sort of kind of a frozen stream. Many streams in the winter time actually look dark or even black in some cases. Um, So let's get this on, get some more, we'll get some over here. We're going to put some trees up above this, but let's put this on now. So this is not <clears throat> perfectly white. It's got some, a little bit of brown in it, got a little bit of ochre in it. Uh, 
Ophir will warm it up a little bit in some spots. Um, even a touch of uh, red in some spots will warm it up. Um, but it's snow really takes on colors around it. So if you have dark trees or something around the snow, it will actually pick up those colors. The snow can have many colors in it rather than just white. So let's just put this on here. good. So I have snow that looks like it maybe has some light shining on it this way. It has some yellows. It's warm. The slow on this side is cooler, although we're going to put some warm in there just to balance the painting out. We don't want to have all the ochre colors on one side. We want to put some warm, warm on this right side as well, but for the most part this is going to be more in the shadow on this side and it's going to be sunnier over here. And then we're going to have some pine trees that fit in here. All right. Speaking of those pine trees, let's see. I don't want to get those in yet. Those are... Um, I'm going to put those in probably last just because they need to go on top of everything. And the, the, the trees behind them have to be finished before we actually put those trees over them. So let's stop and take a look at that and see if it's looking like a bridge that can be in snow and has a tunnel under it. We got the right perspective. Got some trees in the distance up here and some trees a little closer. So I think it's time to start working on some of these trees in this area and uh, even in the background. So I'm going to go back now since I've got most of the underpainting done except for the, the water that goes in here. Um, and some bushes over here and a couple of pine trees that will go there. Um, I think I've got it pretty well to the point where I can start filling in some of the details in the background. We've been painting about a half an hour. Now I'm still going to use my filbert brush and uh, I'm going to get some different colors of brown and blue, darker than what's in the, the background trees. I'm going to come back here and start putting in some another layer, if you will, or another set of brush strokes over what's back there. Just slightly darker, not much darker, but I want to indicate another layer of trees in that distance. Um, and I'm using this brush pretty much the way I use the the big brush, just sort of vertically pulling down. And hopefully this shows up on the camera well enough you can see another layer of trees going in here. They're pretty far away. They don't have a lot of color in them. And being a winter scene, they have sort of this purplish color that stands out and uh, or blue things in the distance from atmospheric perspective show more um, blue or purple in the distance more white on here maybe and a little of this lavender color so I'm just sort of filling in another layer back here and uh, the difference in values helps indicate something going on in the distance. And from several feet away, you see a nice, interesting, soft shape here, and you see some trees and a little bit ahead, a little bit of a bit darker value that are in front of it. And I'm even going to put a couple more trees that sort of stick up here in some areas like that. So 
we can use that and we can then come back with our um, script liner and take a few take some of this uh, paint that we have that uh, is a little bit darker for like trunks so I thin it down with a little bit of thinner to get a nice runny consistency on this brush and then I'm going to just touch in a few things that look like tree trunks back here um, in some spots it could be dead trees or just branches from existing trees um, but it will help continue the illusion that I have a forest of trees back there in the distance and keeping them light keeping them not much darker than what's behind them so they just stand out a little bit um, in the painting we actually had some some interesting color here in the uh, painting that I'm working from has some interesting little bushes up here like this that sort of look like there were some very light trees maybe that are still have some leaves on them that are a little closer um, like this again very 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 light I'm just very touching very lightly with this filbert brush with a little bit of yellow ochre uh, and uh, pretty much all I'm using a darker colors in there but that can't be too interesting back there so let's keep it at that take a little bit of uh, my white I want to get a little white uh, a runny white color here that I can put in for some snow on top I guess if you will and some of these back here like this just highlight some of these trees that might be well, it could be birch trees I suppose that are lighter have a lighter trunk around them and uh, they stand out a little bit so that's about it for the background I'm going to stop and leave that alone and I'm going to move over to this area here and start working on some darks and lights in that area to help bring that <clears throat> bring those trees out a little better right now it's an underpainting <clears throat> in the background um, one thing we can do is use our fan brush with some dark really dark greens a little bit of phthalo blue and some of this uh, ochre maybe a bit of sap green a little bit of dark brown Got a nice dark color here then in this area where we have these trees like this I'm going to put in some looks like pine tree branches sticking out here they're darker and I want to really make them dark as they come down toward the top of this bridge in here this area so I'm making a dark sort of a dark pine tree stand here I'll put a couple couple of them in um, using my dark, a little bit of ochre, a little bit of sap green uh, just on top here to look like there's some trees that are in front of that background. These are pine trees. What's behind it is all not too specific. We don't care too much about it. Um, but just want to make you think we've got another layer of trees in here so every time I do this we're actually creating another layer in this painting that makes it look like we have more depth more planes um, over here I'm going to do something similar I'm, I'm going to use exactly the same colors but I will use 
a similar style here like this and maybe put a few of these branches sticking out like that and another tree over here we'll add some green a little phthalo blue to blue it up colors should get more distinct as they come forward you should be able to see definite contrast difference in what's behind and what's in front and if you do that right, we will actually have some very nice effects of trees in the distance and trees a little bit closer, which is the, the plan here. And I will come back with my script liner in a second and add a few more embellishments in this area. I'm going to have a pine tree that's going to stick up here, so I don't want to paint too much where it's going to go. All right, so that gives me some nice coloration and nice depth variegation. Something like that. Trying to keep these colors in a value pattern that's not real dark. Even though a photograph will show very dark, actual black in some areas. You don't want to paint it that way, it won't look right. Okay, that's that. Let me get my script liner going here and see if I can put in just a few, a few more uh, trunks. A few limbs. I don't need to paint the entire forest with this, but I just want to have some dark places here that look like these trees really do have trunks. So I'm going to put a little vertical line down them. And I'm using a dark, probably a value 7. Okay, too much of that, and we'll get too much interest going on up there. I don't want that to be where the eye goes, but I want it to look like we have some nice trees back there. Okay, let's stop with that. Now, so I would consider that background and that middle ground pretty well finished right now. The uh, original painting actually had some lighter colors. It actually had a, uh, a bush or two that sort of a, a, a lizard and crimson type here and there was another one with some orange in it over here so I may put those in toward the end but right now I want to sort of just finish this off down here these trees actually have some things going on over here not very descript but we want to make sure that it looks like there is some trees or some bushes of some sort back in behind this bridge opening. Okay, so much for that. Now, let's go back and see if we can put some snow on top of this bridge. And I think I'm going to continue to use this filbert. I'm going to get just pure titanium white. I'm going to put a just a light touch, very, very light touch of yellow in it. Because the tops of these are really white, but I don't want them to be stark white. And that's not working. <laughs> so what do we do in that case? Well, one thing we can do is pull out our knife. Palette knife always works for putting on paint on top of existing paint. So let's take the palette knife and get a little paint on our brush, our knife rather. And we'll pull down some things that look like snow here. Maybe some snow there. 
getting a little roll of paint on the knife and just letting the canvas pull that paint off. I don't want it to be nice straight vertical or horizontal like you see it. So I'm going to come back with the brush and touch it up a little bit. Um, I'm going to use the small edge of this knife to put a little snow on top of these caps. Like this. Like that. Okay. <clears throat> so we have some snow on the bridge. Okay, now we want to make that so that it is <clears throat> not totally rectangular. We want to have some interesting abstract shapes out of that. So I'm going to take my filbert brush and just have some additional white paint in it. And I'm going to come in here and scumble in a little bit of change the tops, change the bottoms a little bit, put a little snow coming down this way. So it looks like it's really piled up instead of been just dabbed on with a palette knife. The snow would typically build up in little piles and have some places where you actually see the the bridge and something like that. Something along those lines. Now we have here we have some snow in and around these trees we're going to put in. We have some snow that it's covering. Down here we're going to have some shadows that are going to be cast by the pine trees that are setting up here. So I'm putting in a little of my blue, probably want even a little more lavender to that if I can. You can't see the pine trees that are going there, but I know what I know I see them and I know what's going to be there. So let's just put some of this in like this. And this brush will help smooth and okay. All right, so I'm coming from the top of the painting down. I've got some snow on top of that bridge. It's starting to look like it's uh, real. Now let's put in some texture in this bridge. Um, I'm going to get a little some black and blue in my filbert and I'll just hit some spots here that are going to sort of repaint some of this and give it some blocky texture. I'm going to put a shadow under there so I'm going to actually come back and hit underneath this bridge again. But all along here we want some too dark, too dark. Let's see, like right in here. So the bridge would have some sort of texture on it that makes it look like it's worn and old and got some blotchy marks and so forth. It's not just a one pure color. So that's what I'm trying to indicate here with this, with these little squares, marks.
over here maybe a few spots that have I'll blend it in, make it match the value slightly. So pull up on this a little bit and give myself some places where the snow actually maybe is piled up along here. Soften the edges. And it starts looking like he got snow there. Same with this over here. Soften the edges. Blend it with the shadow. Leave an abstract shape. Over here is supposed to have some lavender in it. I didn't get that put in, so let's put something in over there. Fades off into the distance back there. Again, abstract shapes, pull up some snow and just sort of blend it. All right, that's looking decent. Okay. Here on the right side, we've got some more work to do with some snow with a little lavender in it. If I can get some lavender. Hmm, not too dark. like this. Lighten it up a little bit too dark. So we're getting some interesting shapes over there. color here. Let me go back and see if I... it's a little too dark. Don't want to lose that little post over there. Or these posts here. So I'm hitting them a second time just to reinforce them. I do see some of the color of my background painting coming through. Okay. That won't work. Close this out. All right. Making progress. We have been recording for probably close to an hour, not quite. I'm going to do a couple more things here with uh, some of these colors under here. Put some dark under this bridge to make it look like it is really standing out. Also on the right side of this post should be a little darker here. that. Taking some brown. This brown's giving the shadow underneath. That makes it look like it's a little ledge and sticking out.
otherwise it looks like it's just flat. So we'll put in something like that helps it look a little more three-dimensional. dart one up this side to make sure that sticks out away from what it's supporting. There we go. Okay, so those now look like they're sticking out slightly from From the rest of the bridge. Okay, starting to take on some good looking stuff here. Put a little blue in some spots. I'm gonna add some color here. Pick this blue up that's over here and make it appear on the right side in some spots. Okay, um, there is actually a little snow on the lip of this, um, call it this little arch here. Let's see if I can do that with a knife, that ought to be fun. Try to put it in a curved bit of snow here. Just a little bit of paint on the edge of the knife and just let the canvas pull it off. And then we'll come back and I think I may try to use my script liner for some of this to see if I can feather it just a little bit. on there and the brush. There we go. Okay. I messed that up a little bit. Let me wipe my brush out and see if I can fix it. Probably just gonna use my Little handy dandy filbert will probably be the best thing to do there. Yeah. Okay. All right. This needs to be straightened on this side. And a little white, making sure those are nice, fairly vertical. All right, I think I'm going to stop now and uh, change my videotape and reset my self here and take a uh, short break. I'll be back in just a few seconds. Let me zoom in on this a little bit as we close and let you see some of the detail and uh, I will be uh, stopping now and we will be back in a moment okay we are back and uh, reset my tape and uh, we're ready to finish this little uh, pa painting up um, we have spent about probably an hour painting so far and uh, Hopefully we have a little less than an hour to go, and uh, we'll get going on it here. So, painting this nice uh, winter scene of a bridge, and uh, sort of snow-covered bridge, and uh, 
at least it has snow on parts of it and uh, I'm going to make some of that clear here, pull down some snow in some places that I didn't quite have it done enough of. So, <clears throat> and we got snow along here. Okay, um, we have bushes, we have some trees, we have uh, some water to put in, and uh, that's primarily it. Um, in this area here, I want to make sure I've got this snow really clear, distinct, and uh, all this area back here is nice nondescript, but the snow has some, there is some nice, I should put a little more distinction in that shadow to make sure that it sort of blends here. Have a um, shadow actually from the bridge. These shadows make all the difference in the world. If you if you don't put them in, your painting looks flat. Looks two-dimensional. So trying to make sure that I get a fairly distinct shadow back here. Little phthalo blue always does it. Something like that and then go back over this. Blend it together. Pull it in here like this. Have it match the shadow underneath here. Okay, so we have, have a difference in uh, value change that I want to show. In there, okay. All right. And there's some shadows in here a little bit from the bridge as well. So we'll just put in some dark spots in there. And I think now I'm going to put in these, these pine trees that go up the side. I think I'm going to try to use my filbert and see how it works. And then on the edges I'm going to probably come back and put in the, uh, use my fan brush, a couple of blues and browns, maybe some greens, pick a little oil to give it some ability to flow. Right now it's not flowing too well over dry canvas, which is normal. Since I haven't painted this with anything, there's no liquid white and there's no uh, oil of any kind on this canvas. So it's just purely dry. So this is sort of an underpainting for my one pine tree that's going to stick up in this area. It's going to be lighter and then the trees behind it. So I'm going to make sure that I get it lighter up here if I can. Then the tree next to it is similar in color and shape. A little oil. Oh, and that little oil goes a long way on these canvases. There's going to be some so I'm just putting an underpainting here. Rubbing it in, covering that purple or lavender color canvas here. Okay, 
I'll come back and hit that again, but let's go down and while we've got this color going, I'm going to start putting in some of this water down here. Putting in an under underpainting of the water. A little more oil. This oil keeps the painting from drying uh, quickly. It thins it out and covers the canvas very quickly. So I'm using Thalo Blue, Prussian Blue, and Black. Throwing in a little green here and there to keep it green down. Scrubbing in, scrubbing it in. I have some bush and some more snow coming down on this side, but let's Painting on there. Horizontal strokes. If we make these strokes go sideways or angled, it doesn't look like it's water. Okay, there we go. So that's starting to look like it might be water or frozen or who knows. But it definitely goes under that bridge and there's some snow on back of it and some, it's frozen in some spots. So I'm going to put uh, some additional paint on this I think in a little bit but right now I want to just get it on, get this nice uh, abstract shape if you will going. And I think we even had a little Lighten this area up with a little ochre, maybe. So we green it up, warm it up. Not too much, but let's keep it. So that oil really lets me, linseed oil lets me really spread this paint very quickly. It covers a lot of canvas, but the paint is also very thin, so when it dries, you see a lot of the canvas through it, so you got to come back and put more paint over the top of it. Um, but that is what I want for now. I've got the base under my trees up here. I still see a lot of oil hanging around in the white. Okay, so now my, I'm going to put in these pine trees here. I'm going to use my fan brush again <clears throat> let my filbert rest. This fan brush is going to have, now we're going to get some combinations of dark and light. I'm going to use my phthalo blue with my ochre again over here. I may throw a little Van Dyke. I may throw a little Van Dyke brown in it to brown it up. Maybe even a little dark sienna. But now this paint is thicker, so hopefully it's going to on top of what we have there. Not too much difficulty. But in this area here we're going to start putting in the, this pine tree looking. And by putting that white down behind it for the snow you can see that it actually stands out a little bit. It's highlighting as I stipple it on, put in some dark things for trunks here. It's 
a little bit hard to distinguish it from the trees above it. I'm going to merge this together with the other tree that's over here using some halo blue. my green, a little bit of brown, a little ochre. So let's see how that's going to look. I may have to make it darker than what's behind it just to get it to stand out. These contrast has to be be there or you're losing the object same with this guy over here get some dark colors in it's easy to lose these things and when you're painting over something behind it And these little trunk like things in here. There we go. All right, that's starting to stand out a little bit. Okay. could even come back I suppose and put in a little if I can get it to work I'll take some a little bit of my, my uh, this brush cleaned out good These dark colors are don't like to come out sometimes there we go all right let's see if I can take a little liquid white and maybe since it's thinner than what's on the on there I can maybe put in some snow on these branches by just touching in very lightly and snow and it helps also distinguish them from the trees behind it there's snow behind them so I'll put a little bit of snow in front and then use this brush to sort of blend it together every so slightly so we don't have like blobs of just white paint sticking on there. Okay, not too bad. Let's see, I'm going to put a little, get a little of this lavender color again. If I can find it and sort of blend it in here. Blend these trees right into the ground. And then there's going to be some warmer bushes in front. Something like that. White's almost too white in some spots. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Is too white. If your eye goes over here when you close one eye and look at it, you probably are taking the eye away from the center of interest, which should be over in this area. Okay, that's not too bad. <clears throat> All right, now we have some more bushes that are ochre and yellow and have some green in them and some brown in them. They sort of stack up right in this area here. Kind of left over from the winter. As the so I'm using the fan brush again and just kind of pulling up. Again, these will help point the eye toward the center of interest. 
a little bit of dark sienna on my brush and make some interesting flicks underneath. It just sort of ties it into the into the snow. Put a little more dark. And I ground in there and give myself some other colors that help put some shadow, add three-dimensionality to it. If you have one color, you get pretty flat surface. Even two colors looks pretty flat. But if you put a third color in, third value, I should say, I guess, um, you start getting some nice three-dimensional looks. So I want this to be somewhat muted, but I want it to help point the eye, add some warmth. Maybe there should even be a few over here like this, some grasses sticking up. Maybe there's some that come along this way that were dark and sort of left over on the bank of this hill. Helps define the bottom of that hill. Okay, so that's coming along nicely. Get me some white in here. Just going to blend this together. It looks like the snow has sort of covered some of them up. Mm. These horizontal strokes make it nice. Okay. So we got some warmth on this side. We have a little warmth over here on the other side in a minute. But I think that's coming along nice. Um, over here we actually had some somewhat orange bushes, I guess, reddish orange that were put in the original painting. Put white in there and see if we can warm it up a little bit. Got some bright red with a little bit of the Indian yellow, yellow ochre. Even put a little lizard in there to give it a little bit of a bluer cast. Put some white in there to lighten it up. And we'll see what we get over here. Let's put it in around in his area. It's mostly yellow. more red in there and see if that helps maybe no nope, not that much so these are some bushes that are sort of hanging around this edge and up the slope up here so we're just filling in some of these areas so we don't have a lot of white snow space here abstract shape over here. I don't want it to be square, rectangular, triangular. I want to have some a little Van Dyke to give some definition under here. So we have a few of those. Thin it out, come back and get a little more of this white. And just see if I can merge the something like this. Trying to give the look of a hill here. So the brush strokes make all the difference in the world. If you make the brush strokes go down like this, you'll end up with uh, 
a little bit of shadow in there and then there's some more a few bushes along here let's see ochre and alizarin we'll see what that does for us here maybe in this area hmm. Hmm. Lighten it up a little bit because it's over that water. Some there, some down here. Using the fan brush now and just sort of pushing up on it. red bushes here, red sort of reddish. And we could come back and play with this for a long time if you wanted to, but I think we want to get this bush over this way a little further. The uh, one-third, two-thirds rule, I want to have this past midpoint I want to have it closer to two thirds of the way across. Okay. Some red over here. We actually had some red at the above. about some just shadows here. So this fan brush is giving me some nice under some of these to kind of highlight them just a little more, a little more 3D look. Over here, same thing. A few spots here and there. Okay, so if I look at that now, I have some interesting colors here. I think the this bush, this redness of this bush was something that the original painting had up in this area somewhere. Sort of a, another little light red bush, except it's not very red right now. We'll get some more red in there. Make that work. A little bit of red, redness up here to sort of harmonize the painting. Doesn't have to be very specific, but I do want that color up there, and I want these colors down here, and I want some more color in here. And then run these together so we have these things sort of connected to some extent. Brown, dark sienna rather. Okay. Now the only other thing we might want to do is uh, 
add in some a few fine details with the script liner. Um, maybe highlight a little bit of the some of the bridge abutments. Let's see if I can do this just. Lighten those up, show they're just slightly lighter on one side where they're getting some sun. Since I'm saying the sun's coming from the right, <laughs> I need to hit these like this. So that lightens that up a little. And we want to do the opposite in some dark areas. We want to get some dark gray areas under some spots to highlight those to give a little more depth. So I'm going to get some black at my thinner little oil. Let's see if I can put something under here. Darkens that up a little bit. A little darker, a little darker. So these horizontal lines, horizontal lines will help make that look like it's three dimensional. And then you can even put a little bit on this side over here to darken it to show that it has it's sort of like a like a block almost as a concrete thing that sort of sticks out and make it look like it does if we can something like that and if you don't like that we can sort of with our finger a little bit too dark. Sometimes I have better control with a finger than I do with a brush, so okay. Um, what else? We have a number of little marks and things in this painting that I didn't try to put in everywhere. Um, but I can come back and In some spots in here that look like there's some bumps and maybe some rocks that are covered with snow. We'll add a little texture to this area down here. I'm just using a little black and white. Over here I'm going to make a little more darkness on this side over here. I'm using the uh, filbert brush and sort of just putting in some more shadows. Over here we could have some very specific shadows maybe by the where the snow touches the water. It's not a bad idea. black and white, just a gray color. Maybe there's some rocks that are kind of covered up over here, I don't know. Give ourselves some room to add a few some textures in this snow. That's a big section of snow right there without anything going on, so we'll put in some brush strokes to give it some interesting textures. Okay. 
See, there was a little bit that comes out this way in some spots. Like the ice is kind of taken over in some spots. And some little highlights of just kind of white in some places. If I can get white. Okay. The brush strokes tell you the angle of the of the land. Okay. Think. Look here at this a little bit and see if I can find anything else that I can improve on or help maybe make it look. think I'm going to call a halt to this. Put a few more soft edges in here and let it go. Say we will stop. You gotta know when to stop. Hardest part of painting is trying to figure out when you are finished. But I think for this painting, which we will do on December 19th in our oil painting class. Um, I think I'm going to stop here and uh, say thank you for watching and hope to see you soon. And if you can make the December 19th painting class, I'll see you there. So long.